Hi, I'm Rob from Chislehurst Congregation. Today's devotional is from Genesis 25, Abraham's death and Ishmael's sons. In a previous church, we were thrilled to have a Muslim become a Christian. Uh, he became part of the church. At one point, he said to me, Rob, I want a Christian funeral. Unfortunately, he declined to be baptised. When he died, the Muslim family immediately took control and gave him a Muslim funeral. I couldn't argue his case and, uh, because they would have said, well, he wasn't a Christian, he wasn't baptised. So he was saved, I believe, and is now with his saviour in heaven. But an opportunity was lost to be a witness after his death. The first part of our chapter is the death and burial of Abraham. Using standard language, verse 8 says, He breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. Verse 9, His sons buried him in a certain cave in Canaan, the Promised Land. Why there? That's where his, Sarah, his wife Sarah was buried. Two chapters earlier, the whole chapter is devoted to Abraham buying that plot of land as a burial plot for Sarah. But why didn't he follow custom and return to the land of his ancestors to bury his wife? He was rich enough for the long journey. Because his eyes were set on the future. God had long before told him to leave his country and go to the land I will show you. Hebrews 11 says he was thinking not of the country he had left, but of a better country, a heavenly one. And so God is not ashamed to be called his God. Let our eyes be on our future, on our calling, and God will be proud of us. Now moving on to the next section, Ishmael's sons. Because it is a family history, Genesis includes both sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael. The main story of Isaac and Jacob must go on, but here is an aside about Ishmael's sons. Here we learn Ishmael's oldest was Nebaioth, next was Kedar, and then more sons. Ishmael breathed his last and died and was gathered to his people. It says where his descendants settled. Then the chapter returns to the main family line, Jacob. This list of Ishmael's sons, all 12 of them, may seem uninteresting to us. They are not the chosen people. They are of minor importance in Genesis, the history of the chosen people. But widen your vision to the whole Bible. God's chosen people were to be a blessing to all peoples on earth, Abraham's call. Centuries later, the prophets had to remind them that they were to be a light to the nations. Isaiah 60 mentions the first two sons coming to worship the Lord. All Kedar's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you. They will be accepted as offerings on my altar. I used to keep special verses in my wallet, and this verse I kept there for several years, in my pocket, with me every day. It stirred my heart for the nations, in particular the Arab Middle East, where Kedar and Nebaioth come from. When Jesus was taken to the temple as a baby, old Simeon somehow recognised him as a saviour, took him in his arms and thanked God that Jesus was not only glory for Israel, but also a light for the nations. We are rightly rooted in our church, which is our spiritual family. Let us also keep our eyes on the nations, on Kedaiath, Nebaioth, Kedar and others. Let's pray. Father, help us to keep our eyes not on the past where we've come from, but the future where we're going to. Lord, let us corporately be a light to the nations. Lord, the Muslim Middle East and all the nations, Lord, whether here on our doorstep in London or to the ends of the earth. And Lord, may we individually be witnesses to those that Abraham was called to and Ishmael's sons were representatives of. 
Amen.